Hi folks, welcome to this lesson on the properties of sine and cosine graphs. So we already learned that sine x looks like, let me just try and do a half decent job of sketching one cycle of the graph, something like this, and this would be 360 degrees for a complete revolution. Um, we're typically going to end up doing this in radians, so we'll come back for that in a second. For cosine, and let's see that this goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. For cosine, we'd start up here. And same sort of shape would ensue, okay? except that we start at the top of it, or at its peak, at its maximum. And again, it would take 360 degrees to complete that full cycle and go back to where it started. Now, if we do this in radians, let's think about that. 360 degrees is 2 180s, or 2 pi. So 2 pi to complete a full cycle. On the sine graph, that would mean halfway through the cycle, or at pi, we're on the x-axis. Pi over 2, we're at a max. And at 3 pi over 2, we're at a min, because 3 over 2 is halfway in between 1 and 2. Same sort of idea for cosine, except at pi, you'd be at a min. At half of pi, or pi over 2, you'd be on the x-axis. And same thing at 3 pi over 2. So the graphs are really sort of just uh, cut into four parts, okay? A, for the sign, a rising part, a falling part, another falling part, and then another rising part. Both are the same shape, called a sinusoid. So both sine and cosine are sinusoids. We develop these by saying sine theta and cos theta, uh, but we're going to generalize more and just use x as our typical variable, because it may not always be an angle that we're talking about in the end. Both of these are what we call periodic graphs. They're graphs that repeat themselves. So this sine graph is going to keep on doing its thing over and over again to the left and to the right. And same with the cosine graph. It's going to keep doing its thing again and again. The period is the width of one full cycle. And it doesn't matter where you count it from. So from here to here, that would be one full cycle. The graph has done its thing. And then if you want the rest of the graph, you just stamp it over and over again. Okay. So that period width, in this case, is 2 pi. Same thing with cosine. Uh, if we count from the top to the next time it goes to the top, that's a full period. It's done its exact thing, and then it just repeats itself. And that default period is 2 pi, or if we're in degrees, 360 degrees. There's this horizontal midline, which is just the x-axis running through it. Okay. And the equation of the x-axis is just y equals 0. And then there's something we call the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance between the midline and a maximum. It's always framed positively. It's how high it goes. The default amplitude on both of these is 1. So you can see it goes up to a max of 1 uh, and down to a min of negative 1. And that makes sense because the furthest uh, that on the unit circle that you can get away from the origin is 1. The domain is x, and it should say epsilon r here. So it's all real numbers. These graphs continue forever and ever and ever. The range, though, is, uh, is restricted to negative 1 to 1. So that's the basic look of each graph. Here's what I would be placing in my mind palace that this is the basic look of sine x, an untransformed sine x, and this is the basic look of an untransformed cos x. I need to know what the parent functions look like before I start to transform them. Now that we know their basic properties, let's mess with them, transforming the period and amplitude of sinusoids. So I'm showing both of them here, but the A and Bs mean the same thing. From our general transformations of functions, if you have a number as a coefficient in front of the whole function, that's a vertical stretch by a factor of A, whatever A is, okay, or absolute value of A. Uh, if it's a negative A, and then that we're talking about an x-axis reflection. There's special terminology for this in sinusoidal functions. The a value would tell us the amplitude. 
amp is a okay or the absolute value of a so if you see a one in front of the whole thing it has an amplitude of one you probably wouldn't see a one in front as a coefficient and that's why sine x just has an amplitude of one there's a secret one here now let's think about the b the b is going to control the horizontal stretch so this would be a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of the reciprocal of b and we've done these before these transformations of functions um, if you have a negative b it's a y-axis reflection we don't typically need to see that for um, for sinusoidal graphs so let's leave it out now if we change the width of a function we're messing with its period so here's how it works if you're in radians the period of the function is just 2 pi the default period divided by b and where that comes from is 2 pi is the default period times the stretch factor which would be 1 over b gives us a cute little way to figure out what period is easily and that in turn can let us sketch these graphs without too much grief so let's think about this first one 3 sine of 2x before I go ahead and graph it I'm going to need to describe it so that 3 is a vertical stretch uh, let's just call it though by its trig name it's got an amplitude of 3 that means it's going to vary 3 from the midline this 2 here is our b value so period is 2 pi over 2 or just pi okay, if you prefer you could say oh it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half normally the period is 2 pi but we're stretching it by a factor of a half so it's going to be half as big oh it's pi you can see how that's a more painful way of getting what we got over here okay. so let's graph this it's a sine graph so in my mind palace I'm thinking oh y equals sine x looks like this let's just make that graph worry about my numbers later nice there is par at least part of that graph how do I show it has an amplitude of 3 bam now it has an amplitude of 3 instead of 1 now its period is pi and I'm supposed to sketch it from 0 to 2 pi uh oh so I guess I just need to keep on doing the whole thing over and over again if I want to go to 2 pi well I'm gonna have two complete cycles in this case so here would be 2 pi now you can show some key points in between those if you want this would be half a pi this would be 3 pi over 2 you can go uh, really carried away with it and say oh that means this is pi over 4 and this is 3 pi over 4 this is 5 pi over 4 and this is 7 pi over 4 when we say 7 pi over 4 we just mean 7 quarters of a pi um, you don't need to put all those numbers in typically the IB is not going to ask you to graph these because you'll have your GDC for that but it's important that we understand what they look like let's check out the next one it's got a 1 in front but it's got a negative ah that's an x-axis reflection and it's got nothing happening to its x so its period is still 2 pi nothing has changed just default and there's an amplitude of 1 because uh, it's got a secret 1 here negative 1 times cosine x all right so in my mind I'm thinking about usually cosine looks like this it starts all I think in my head is it starts high if I flip it through the x-axis then it's going to start at its minimum of negative 1 and since it has an amplitude of 1 it's going to go to a maximum of 1 sometimes people struggle with making these look good and connecting them together so I'm just going to think a negative cosine graph is going to start low then it'll go to the middle then it'll go to the top then it'll go to the middle then it'll go to the bottom connect that all up as nicely as I can and we should definitely be graphing in pencil and in this case the period's 2 pi so there's 2 pi we've automatically shown the domain that they were looking for from 0 to 2 pi you can check these with your GDC let's do one more 
Oh, this one's really annoying. It's got an amplitude of 5. But you can't see it as something times x. So I would rewrite this as 5 sine x over 4 means a quarter times x. And that a quarter is going to help us with our period. Period is 2 pi over whatever that number is. Or 2 pi over a quarter. Let's follow that through. Or 2 pi divided by a quarter. Uh, how do we divide by fractions? We flip and we multiply. So the period of this thing is going to be 8 pi. Okay, let me graph. And it's sine in this case. So, and it's got an amplitude of 5, goes up to 5, goes down to negative 5. And so sine goes up and then middle and then down and then middle. And I could just put it all in there. You might be saying, hold on, it's too far. We'll deal with that in a second. This would be 8 pi. I'm only supposed to graph according to the question from 0 to 2 pi. So let's figure out. That would mean halfway through here would be 4 pi. And this little part here would be 2 pi. OK, so I showed too much. How can I fix that? I'm going to erase. And I need to change my settings so that I'm erasing bit by bit here. So. I'll erase everything up to 2 pi, or everything after 2 pi. That's as much as the graph as we're asked to show. Now, normally we just want to show one default full period, uh, but we might get some stipulation that it's only up to 2 pi, which might mean multiple cycles, like we did in the first one, which might be one cycle, like we did in the second one, or it might mean less than one cycle, like we did in this third one. What you're more likely going to run into than having to graph them by hand is to have to find the equation of these. So when I look at each of these functions over here, I can decide whether I think it's a sine or a cosine graph. Truth be told, you could see it either way. But I think this one here looks very sine-y to me because it starts at the origin. It starts on the midline. And then it goes up next. So I would think of this as a sine graph. It's up to you, though. You could pause the video and see if you could come up with an equation. We know this about period. Period is 2 pi over b. That also means that it can be rearranged that b is 2 pi over period. So let's look at this thing. Its amplitude is 2. Its period the width of one cycle is going to be 8 pi. So now we can find the equation. It's going to be y equals 2 sine of something x. And that something will come from this b, so b, b, x, 2 pi over period, or 2 pi over 8 pi, or a quarter. So that must mean this is the equation. Now, normally, I would reveal uh, what the equation is behind this function, uh, but I'm doing this in a PDF instead of in Smart Notebook, so I can't. So we could head to the GDC and double check that this is the correct graph or Desmos. It is going to be, though, because we use the amplitude and we use the period. Let's check out the next one. In this next one, let's see what's happening here. It starts at the bottom. And it goes all the way down here. And it goes down again. Notice we've been shown two full cycles here. Now, one thing we can be sure of is the amplitude. The amplitude on this is 2. That's how much it varies from the midline. I would see this as a cosine graph that's flipped upside down. It's flipped upside down. Now you can see it other ways. You could see it as a sine graph that shifted, or a regular cosine graph that shifted, or a negative sine graph that's shifted. I think this is the easiest way, though. So let's see. Its equation is going to be amplitude is 2, 
cosine, and here's what does the flip, the upside down or x-axis reflection. It's a negative in front of the whole thing. And then it's going to be something times x. Okay, let's think about this whole thing. How wide is a cycle? Well, two cycles took 24. I think that's a little much. Let's, let's undo that. One cycle, especially if I start right at the bottom here, one full cycle takes 12 units to complete itself. So period is 12, is 12. That means B is 2 pi over period, or pi over 6. So our B value will be pi over 6 in here. And you can double check that this really will work properly. I followed along one full cycle from here to here. But if you wanted to measure a full cycle from, say, here to here, does that change the period? Let's think about that. Period is the width of the cycle. How wide is this? It goes from negative 6 to positive 6. Ah, it's 12 wide. If we did it from 0 to 12, we'd still find that the period is 12 wide. If you wanted to start counting it from, I don't know, from back here, well, a full cycle will still take 12 units wide. It doesn't matter where you start from, same period either way. Now that we've got uh, some basics on how to describe some of these graphs, you can check out 525 and 526, numbers 1 to 4 in the Oxford text. Again, our big ideas here come from, these are the basic looks of our sinusoids, sine and cosine. These are what's living in our mind palace. And this is how you transform them. Number out front of the function changes the amplitude or vertical stretch. Number, number beside x changes the horizontal stretch or changes the period according to this property. Good luck with the material, folks, and take care.